Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests. It's always a privilege to be able to welcome you to any African event because it's always filled with warmth, energy, excitement, new ideas, some debates. And thank you to Dumi Senda for getting us off to the right start. Dumi is a Zimbabwean poet and children's author. And so thank you for that, for injecting us with energy for the day. It's my great privilege to be able to welcome you formally to the Africa Business Forum. The Oxford Business Forum Africa is co-sponsored by the Saheed Business School and by the Africa Oxford Business Network, or as we call it, the Africa OBN. The Africa OBN is a student-led organization which aims to further the cause of African talent and content on, on the continent. And we do this through a number of ways. We do this by co-hosting this forum with the school. We do it through a student-led trek which this, to Africa, which this year goes to Rwanda and Kenya. And we do it through a series of talks which focus on African-related content. Continent, content. Um, my name is Peter Lynx, and I'm one of four co-chairs on the Africa OBN, along with Lauren Shadoni from South Africa, Stephanie Mambo from Kenya, and Mofe Benite from Nigeria. Let it never and never again be said that African leaders don't know how to share power. <laughs> My journey with the Saheed Business School began on the 5th of December 2013, where I attended an Oxford Saheed recruitment event in Johannesburg, South Africa. I attended the event not because I deemed myself an Oxford man, but mainly because it was at a really fancy hotel. <laughs> I'm unashamed to admit that I went because I had never been to the fancy hotel. And this fancy hotel is also famous because it's where Nelson Mandela actually wrote his autobiography, The Long Walk to Freedom. So I attended for spectator, spectator value, because at that stage I had my heart set on a different MBA at a different international MBA school. I probably shouldn't say that in front of the dean. <laughs> at the event, however, the then director of the MBA program said something quite thought-provoking. He said, if you want to get a promotion, if you want to get a salary increase, if you want to change geographical location, and if you want to change careers, there are many international MBAs that can give you that outcome. But, he said, there's always a but, if you want to change the world, however you define change, come talk to us at Oxford Saheed. Those are the people we're interested in. He had me convinced, of course, <laughs> that this was the school for me. He then followed up that awesomeness with a picture of Tata Nelson Mandela himself at this school in the foyer that you've just registered in, having just opened up the Nelson Mandela Lecture Theatre himself and this is why we have the bust of him here. So we're very proud of this venue. Of course, at this stage, I was basically completing the application form in my head already, you know, because I was convinced that this was the school for me. As I drove home from that event on the 5th of December 2013, I heard that Nelson Mandela had died while we were in that venue and being challenged to change the world again. This is why I'm here. Welcome to the Africa School. Here, we care about solving world-scale problems. It took me three years to get to this business school, however. I'm a brown man from the Cape Flats of South Africa. Oxford is not written in my stars, or in the stars of anyone from the community I'm from. Even once you manage to get out of that situation and your profile is international MBA ready, the black tax is real. Who, has, who can afford to take a year out of their career? Who can afford to leave their responsibilities behind? And who can afford to study at the University of Oxford in pounds with our exchange rate? <laughs> but this school made it possible. And they made it possible in a number of ways. First of all, they constantly reminded us that we were good enough as Africans to apply to this school. That we shouldn't self-select out that we shouldn't deem ourselves not worthy, which unfortunately is still a very African trait. Secondly, they offered GMAT support. Now, for those of you who don't know GMAT, <laughs> GMAT is an evil little test <laughs> designed to test your high school and English maths at the, at the management level. But this school provided free online support to those who applied through The Economist to make sure that you did well in that GMAT and could come and study at the University of Oxford if you applied your mind. And finally, the school offered a host of scholarships to deserving students from the African continent and from other continents. 
And they do this with the dean and the development team who circle the world in search of funding. You see, this is the Africa School, where we don't pay lip service to developing African talent, where we put our money where our mouths are in order to get the numbers right. We are proud to announce that for the first time globally, this is the first international MBA program in the world to have more than 10% of the class come from the African continent. I think. It's a huge achievement, and we have to thank two people, the Dean for prioritizing that, and Tammy Brophy standing in the corner who travels to every African country she can in search of talent. Keep an eye on her. But so why have you come here today? We're, we hope you're here because you've either done business in Africa, intend to do business in Africa, or care a lot about African, the African story and African development. We think you're here because we need you to help us rewrite the African story for future generations and for her next phase of growth. We asked ourselves the question in trying to develop the theme, for how long will Africa be relegated to that category of developing, be relegated to category of potential? Will she always be the bridesmaid? And will she ever be the bride? <laughs> Our theme this year is designed to help us all reimagine, rethink, and rewrite the African story so we can prepare for the next phase of growth and by doing business in Africa. I'm about to wrap up, don't worry. This is the Africa Business Forum. And a constant debate within this business school and within the wider university is whether the business of business is business or whether business has a much larger role to play in society, specifically in Africa, in helping her gear up for growth. We think you're here to answer that question today. And to help you do that, we've lined up the most amazing lineup of speakers, moderators, panelists, all of them visionaries, all of them successful business leaders in Africa. You'll see the lineup today. And they're gonna help us answer the question, how do we leverage the wisdom of Africa in order to prepare for growth? How do we talk about what's worked? How do we be candid about what doesn't work in Africa? And I'm sure you all have stories. So that we can do business in Africa and help her get to the next level. Some practical matters for the day. Stephanie Mumbo, one of the co-chairs, will take you through the order of the day. So she'll keep coming up on stage to help you navigate the day. We have an amazing graphic recorder, Zuhura Plummer, over there. She's busy recording uh, some of the key topics and themes that come, come from the day. And please feel free to go up to her, interact with her, give her ideas, and we'll try and put those up by the end of the day and definitely share it with you on social media afterwards. Um, please use the hashtag OxfordBFA and hashtag ProverbialAfrica when you tweet. Please do tweet and Instagram. And then if there is a fire drill, and there's almost always a fire drill at Oxford, some at least once a day, Please, will you exit cautiously up the stairs, out through back of through the foyer where we saw Nelson Mandela, and out um, th to the front of the school. Th th that's the admin for the day. Finally, if this truly is the Africa School, it must have a chief. Please join me in welcoming the dean of the Saeed Business School, Professor Pete Stefano. Well, after that start, I think my work is done. <laughs> anyway, good morning to Oxford. Good morning to Oxford Said. Good morning to this, this amazing activity that we're going to spend this day together. Welcome to the Nelson Mandela Lecture Theater. Welcome to Oxford. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I'd like to specifically thank, at the beginning and at the end, a number of people. I'd like to thank our honored guests and our speakers. I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank the organizers. I'd like to thank my fantastic staff. And what's especially impressive about this is this is really a collaboration between the staff and the students of this school. We've come together and worked together because this is really important. Now, the topic for this conference is proverbial Africa. So last night, um, I was you know, mentioning that I had to make some remarks. And, and, and one of our good friends sent me a, an email link with a, to a website about all the African proverbs, <laughs> figuring I needed that kind of help. Uh, and I did read through them, and there's many good proverbs 
But I didn't think it would be authentic for me to use somebody else's proverb. So I'm going to give you my own story and my own proverb, which I think is completely relevant to today and to our keynote speaker. So some years ago, I was in an office with my boss. Uh, it was a particularly hard day. Uh, he had had a bad day. I had had a bad day. Uh, and he just turned to me, and, he, and it wasn't a slogan, and it wasn't something he said more than once, but it's something that I've remembered for the rest of my professional life. And he said, Peter, we have to feed the opportunities and starve the problems. Uh, and I reflect on that. Feed the opportunities, starve the problems. And that's been my motto ever since. So what does that mean? Who feeds the opportunities? Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship is the pursuit of opportunity beyond the resources under your control. Entrepreneurs feed opportunities. Who else? Educators. How do we do it? Well, Honestly, all you young people, you are the opportunities. You are the ones who are going to change the world. So feeding you, nourishing you, intellectually nourishing you is part of what we're all about. And that's what this is all about. And by this, I don't mean this conference, what Peter described. Why is it that we have 10% of our class from Africa, despite the fact that that's five times bigger than the average for any other business school? Why is it that two-thirds of the scholarships, two-thirds of you are on scholarship, when that's not true of the rest of the school? Why do we put all of our resources into this conference? Why do we have two international modules in Africa and none to many other places? Why is it that my wife and I write a personal check to support some students? Why is it that we've been supporting case cases to write about Africa? Why am I so frustrated that we don't have a full-time African professor and still there's not enough scholarships? It's because we need to feed the opportunities and starve the problems. Africa is an opportunity. What do I mean by that? I don't mean it in some rosy way that Africa rising is what's going to happen in the world. Um, we know that there's tremendous statistics that would show that, for example, by 2010, the African population will quadruple from where it is right now. We know that there's tremendous opportunity, but it is not without some challenge. But unless we feed the opportunities, then we'll never get there. That doesn't mean celebrate them. That doesn't mean fetishize them. That doesn't mean ignore the problems with them. It means feed them. And in my world, the way that we feed opportunities is that we help young people, both people from Africa and people from the rest of the world, to understand what can happen in Africa and therefore help them along that path. So today is a day of feeding. It's ideas, so food for the mind, uh, food for the soul, because what I've found, as I found then that dark day a long time ago with my boss, that having somebody else to share your thoughts with is really important, and a little bit of food, too. Uh, so hopefully some of you who had, were at last night's dinner at Bailey will enjoy that. So in the spirit of feeding opportunities and starving problems, I am thrilled to introduce our keynote speaker for this morning, Mo Ibrahim. Now, I think you all know him, but I don't think it's enough to say he needs no introduction. That's not fair. Um, but in the spirit of feeding the opportunities and starving the problems, as an entrepreneur, the creator of Celltel, Obviously, he created a tremendous opportunity, not only in the mobile tele telephony space, but more importantly, as we know, that that's the chassis upon which many, many other innovations in the continent ride, whether those are innovations that connect people to one another, allow businesses to run more efficiently, allow people in public health to do their work better. So much sits on the, on the chassis that uh, Celtel has created. So as an entrepreneur, he's fed opportunities. But since 2006, with the creation of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, he's not only fed opportunities, but he's helped starve problems, too. What do I mean by that? Well, there's another famous maxim in business is that you manage what you measure. And so one of the most important things uh, that the Mo Ibrahim Foundation does is the Ibrahim Index of African Governance, which looks at countries across the continent and grades them in terms of rule of law and other factors. How is that feeding opportunities and starving, challenge, starving problems? Because businesses can identify where they'd like to do business, feeding those opportunities, and where they don't want to do businesses, which is to starve the problems. And then if there's another proverb, but it comes out of the Bible, which suggests that we shouldn't put our light under a bushel, but rather we should shine it brightly. And the Mohibrahim Awards for African leadership do just that. They identify those people who have done outstanding work and actually put a spotlight on top of their candles so that we can see even better the kind of great work that can be done. So in the spirit of 
feeding the opportunities and starving the problems. I'm thrilled to honor our keynote speaker this morning, Mo Ibrahim. Thank you very much.